So, Tally, election week, final week. Uh, we've had a pretty interesting and chaotic election campaign. I guess it's no different this year from previous elections. But uh, it's been really interesting seeing how uh, the party leaders have had to react to different crises. And uh, the latest one we've seen is the, the betting scandal. Both yeah. uh, Conservatives and Labour have uh, been affected by this. How do you think the party leaders have dealt with it from the perspective of you being our head of crisis? So I think um, what's really key here is the speed at which they responded. Um, I think the issue for the Conservatives is that they took, I think, nearly a week to respond to this whereas Keir Starmer reacted straight away in terms of suspending the candidates. Um, I think in a crisis, um, you know, days are essentially months in terms of public perception. So the longer things drag on for, the more damaging they will become. Um, so absolutely responding to things as quickly as possible, even if you're not entirely sure that the response is, you know, as perfect as it should be, or that it may change in future, saying something rather than saying nothing or doing something is what's going to save you in a crisis. Yeah, I think that's really true. Um, and of course, it's not the only uh, sort of crisis situation we've had from uh, either party leader. Early on in the campaign, we had the Prime Minister uh, and the D-Day celebration, which is one of the big yeah. things that really cut through, actually. I thought it was really interesting the how with polling uh, that was done uh, every week, that it was one of those things that really cut through and has lasted as one of the things that voters have really remembered. Um, and of course, the Conservative PM putting himself in a situation where effectively he's uh, allowing himself to be attacked from the right and the left, uh, both from reform and for Labour for failing to attend, uh, if, and also being described as unpatriotic. It's a really difficult situation for him. And how do you think he could have uh, really thought about this more and been more prepared for it. I mean, I think everyone was just unbelievably shocked at the fact that that happened in the first place. It was obviously one of the biggest blunders of the campaign so far. Um, it was made even worse uh, by the fact that he was leaving to do an ITV interview for his campaign. Um, and obviously, I think what really got to everyone is that kind of blatant showing of, or what felt like a showing of disrespect. Uh, for something so monumental. Um, I think uh, in and of itself, it may not have been quite as bad, but what it did is it kind of reinforced the mistrust that was there already. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I don't think he his response was quite up to scratch or happened quickly enough in terms of an apology. He eventually did apologise. The interesting thing is how it was allowed to happen in the first place. Mm. Um, and I wonder if his communications advisors, Sunak's communications advisors, had actually flagged this, but weren't able to stand up to him in the way that they should have. Um, or if, in fact, the election campaign was such a distraction that it was genuinely missed. Um, either way, I think uh, you have to... Well, our CEO has a, uh, has a motto, which is, only the paranoid survive. Um, and I think uh, at you know election time, most definitely, but for anyone at any point in their careers or even in business when they're in the public eye, seeing, making sure that you're looking at things through the lens of a number of different audiences as a communications advisor and how it could possibly, how any action could possibly be perceived is key. And that, ta that takes a lot of work, that takes a lot of preparation and I guess at times like elections, there is even less time to do that kind of work. Yeah, absolutely. And I think having been through several uh, election campaigns from the inside, it's really interesting how effectively your horizon really shrinks uh, and you're just reacting from uh, one situation to the next. What's the latest day's headlines? What's going to happen? And you, you lose that sense of uh, horizon scanning, really, which is so, so important. And I think the other thing I want to pick up on is this, this sense of groupthink, I think, which is something that is very easy to get into when you're in a group of uh, advisors uh, or a group of uh, leaders trying to support a, a CEO or a, uh, a party leader in this case. Uh, and effectively, you're all thinking on the same wavelength. So, so having people who can really challenge that, I think, is so, so important. Absolutely. And I think that is one of the benefits for us of being an external consultant is often, um, as you say, whether it is a CEO or a politician, uh, sometimes we will be listened to in a different way to an internal team. We might be giving exactly the same advice 
Um, but the fact that we are coming uh, to the conclusion as outsiders sometimes means um, that um, advice is taken more seriously. Um, I think what's really interesting also is, you know, as you say, in times of pressure, in times of crisis, it is very hard, very hard for anyone as human nature to think clearly. So doing that horizon scanning or what we call scenario planning, um, again, whether you're a business, whether you are in politics, um, way ahead of time and making sure that you have mapped out exactly what direction various things can go in um, and what your response is likely to be is key. Um, so what we will do with businesses, for example, is scenario planning, scenario testing. We will put them through crisis simulation workshops where they are literally living through a tech platform that we offer. And they're literally living through a live experience of a crisis. We've done a few recently with clients where we've looked at um, uh, cyber attacks, uh, where we've looked at uh, being you know, victims of AI deep fakes, um, uh, E. coli outbreaks as manufacturers, etc. And it really puts people through the live experience of what it feels like and what their responses would be. And from that, you can build a proper crisis playbook, um, a plan for the various different directions things can go in and how you would respond to them. Um, so there's amazing technology to do that with at the moment. Um, and uh, I think, uh, obviously, there are some things that you can't plan for. Um, D-Day was certainly one that you could have. It's yeah. been in the diary for what, 80 years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that. And I think that preparedness point is so key. Um, everybody thinks that, uh, I think sometimes that, that a crisis is something you just have to react to in the moment. But actually being prepared, thinking about your lines to take beforehand, thinking about your plans for different scenarios, all these things can be done in advance, can be stress tested. And that's, I think, why it's so important to think clearly about that. Absolutely. And I think very often businesses will spend a, you know, a lot of time and a lot of money working out business continuity plans, i.e. Mm. how do things continue from an operational perspective when something goes horribly wrong. Um, and very often they don't take into account the reputational element of that, mm. which can be the most damaging to any individual or any business. Yeah, exactly. Well, look, we've got one week of the campaign left to go. Who knows what crisis might uh, crop up? But I certainly I think there's a few lessons to take away from there. Um, you know, if people are interested in uh, more uh, of our election analysis, they can go to our Sec Newgate Election Hub on our website. Uh, look out for the two fantastic events that we've got coming up uh, in the next 10 days or so. And also all of the exciting analysis uh, and uh, information that we've got prepared for immediately after the general election result. Thanks, Chris.